welcome to another episode of the Rest and Recovery Podcast. Today I have Victor Sagalovsky. 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 I already hacked that up. Uh, and uh, we're going to talk about water and uh, some some interesting elements that are in our water that we don't know about. So. Welcome to the Rest of Recovery Podcast. Thank you. So we're here at the Biohacking Congress in Miami. Yes, we are. Uh, how's that going for you so far? Uh, it's going great. I'm happy to be here. I love Miami, and I think this is a great group of people here. Yeah. And uh, seeing old friends. It's been a couple of years since we did a conference, so. Yeah, it's great to uh, connect with people live and in person. Exactly. And uh, as a podcast host, you usually doing it virtual, so right, it's, it's right. great to kind of it's, it's a, get I, some live interaction it's, here. It's much better. Way. In first, <laughs> your fashion way, right? Fashion. So, we're talking about light water, and it's a product. And you know, we we're talking offline a minute ago. It's water. Like you did think it's just water, but apparently it's not. Or that's, as you said, that's actually what we want. Yeah, that's so, what we want. We want water, H two O. So there's an element called deuterium. Maybe just explain, right, what that is. And- deuterium is a version of hydrogen called an isotope. People probably know what the word isotope is, it's just a version of something else. So in this case, hydrogen has three isotopes, it has the main one, which is the abundance of the universe is made of protium, which is what we, or what we commonly refer to as hydrogen. Okay. And then there's a small amount of deuterium and tritium, which is shouldn't even be talked about because there's so little unless you want to get into like nuclear physics. So, <laughs> but, the, the, but deuterium is a, a isotope of hydrogen that is double the mass. And it's so it's the only element that has an isotope that is actually double the mass of its main of its main constituent of that element. Okay. And the reason is because el- because hydrogen is the simplest element in nature. It's the first element created in the universe. It's still the abundant the abundance of the universe is still hydrogen, seventy five percent, and everything runs on hydrogen. Our bodies, stars, rocket ships. Okay. And, and because it's so simple, right? It's just a proton and an electron. There, every other element has a neutron. Well, deuterium is a hydrogen but with a neutron. Okay. And that's what makes it double the mass. Okay. Okay. And there's six drops of this in every liter of water on this planet. Just okay. about. Some places have lower deuterium, but for the most part, it's call it six drops in every liter of water, which doesn't seem like very much. Right. It doesn't sound like much at all. Right. But when you look at how much of it is in our blood, because through, through everything we consume, we see that it's four to five times more than the basic elements that we need, basic constituents of life, glucose, potassium, magnesium, calcium, there's four to six times more of this deuterium floating around in our blood. And this is a natural contaminant. It's been here since the beginning. It's been here since the Big Bang. And there's a very small amount of it, but it gets into all the water and it does does particular damage to our mitochondria. And as we know, like mitochondria, just explain that, like, I mean, that's like the main energy source for us to exist and live. Right. Right, right. Mitochondria are the factories inside our cells. The little swimming little factories yeah. that produce that produce energy, produce right. ATP, and, and without it, we wouldn't live very long, if, if at all. So when we start out in life, we have a lot of them. You know, a cell may have a hundred thousand mitochondria swimming in there, all active, producing energy and metabolic water. And as we age, we lose that mitochondria. You know, right. the, and one of the reasons we lose that mitochondria is deuterium. Deuterium breaks down the mitochondria, and I can explain the actual mechanism of how it does that. So, but as you get older, you have less mitochondria. So it's like the the the, the you know seventy year old, eighty year old might have like uh, uh, you know where is he, where is he had a hundred thousand, maybe he has a thousand now. You know? Okay. So you want to, but you can't. You know, right. <laughs> the, the soul is willing, but the body is weak. Right. Because it's just mechanical. You don't have the mitochondria anymore. Well, the machine starts to slow down. I think I, I heard you. Or Slow down else. and stop. And, you know, our, there's just our less of those machines floating in our body, right. so less energy is made. So, is it kind of like the rust factor within our body, the deuterium, or is that like a? I wouldn't say it's a. Ru- I wouldn't say it's a rust factor. It's just a particular problem in our bi- in the biology. Okay. That that you have something that you're, 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 these your mitochondria runs on protons okay. from hydrogen. Right. In fact, all food breaks down to those protons. Everything you eat breaks down to those protons. So, so those protons spin this motor to create the ATP, which is the which is the uh, currency of our biology. Um, now, when deuterium gets in there, it's a proton and a neutron, so it's twice the weight. Okay, it's like dragging your dead twin brother around. <laughs> you so it's like or wearing like a rucksack. Like you're yeah, yeah, you're yeah, yeah, yeah. You double the weight. Pounded. Yeah, you're like you right. double the mat. And, and, yeah. and, um, and so this doesn't fit 
into that into that electron transport chain. So it causes damage, like a bull in a china shop. And it does it cumulatively over and over and over. And and my theory, and supported by supported by some evidence out there, is that is that um, we just when humans evolved, we evolved with less deuterium on the planet because we have we have a system to manage this stuff, you okay. know, or, or 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 at least attempt to manage it. We get over it gets overrun very very fast. Okay, and then and then when you and then when you reduce the deuterium level, you see that the body's everything the physiology changes. Like you get down to in the 120 range, mm -hmm. you know, and you start seeing some incredible biological benefit. And then you okay. and then and then you go wow maybe this is maybe our body's engineered for this deuterium level and not this deuterium level. So so if I heard you right, so at some point during life's existence, we as humans were able to expel that. Ether, well, we or well, you never you can never get it all, but but right. the thing is, we had longer lifespan. Right. And and things grew bigger. Okay, ferns. Three stories tall, dinosaurs that weigh you know fifty thousand tons. I don't know, just, everything grew bigger. Right. And why did things grow bigger? Because there was less deuterium. Okay. Yeah. And is there like a demarcation point maybe in science that like noticed there was a rise or or there was maybe less than at some point? Well, the flood myth is very interesting because you know that's something that we have in our history. Right. You know, as recorded in the Bible and other other um, Book of Enoch and other places, you so say you got this flood myth. And what's interesting in this flood myth is before that, if you believe, if you if, if you believe their numbers, you know, that, that they're saying that the original patriarchs would live to 800, 900, 1,000 years. Right. And after the flood, those lifespans just went, just crashed. Yeah. It went down to 120, which is where we're at today. Okay. So um, our atmosphere change. I, I wouldn't say it's only deuterium. It has to, there's, there's other things. There's, there's, there's gravity, there's atmosphere, things, mm -hmm. things like that. But, I, I, you know, as a... Um, Early on in life, I was just fascinated with uh, gerontology, you know, study of aging. Okay. And and the and because I, you know I read stories about immortals, you know, so what are they doing? Yeah. <laughs> Why are we dying? Why are they living? You right. Know? So I try to just find those things that were like were like the secrets of longevity, and uh, this is one of them. Yeah. Because this is this is a foundational intervention. This is something um, that is the this is this is something that is at the is at the root. This is the root of aging. Okay. Because age, you know you can define aging as the loss of life force, loss of energy. That, that energy is created by the mitochondria. Right. As you have less mitochondria in your body, it's it's called age. You have more. You have more. You have, you're more prone to more errors. Errors and errors in DNA transcription. Errors in enzyme replication. You're just you're just when you're weaker, you're more op you're more open. You're more susceptible to sure. to getting hit. Yeah. By something. That makes sense. Um, so, what's the hedge to stop that or slow that so that I would think we're talking about energy. So there's a level of vitality that reduces over time, kind of that battery drain. What's the process or how do we mitigate that? Well, the way to mitigate that is, is to, uh, in, in this particular protocol is to reduce the deuterium in the body. Okay. Um, now you can, the easiest way is to drink deuterium depleted water, which never existed before. At least, I mean, in nature, in nature, there are certain places where the water is more, like a lower, lower, and this is this is where this discovery comes from. Okay, as in Siberia, they were they were trying to figure out why these populations had uh, these uh, populations living in harsh environments had uh, had um, well, there was three hundred in one study there was three hundred and twenty four centenarians per one million, and everywhere else in Russia it was like forty something. Okay. So like, why are these people living so much longer and healthier? And so and the, and so they spent a couple of years trying to figure this out in the late, in the late fifties, and they honed in on their deuterium was. 16%. They had their water was 16% lower in deuterium than everybody else. And where and, was that? Uh, in Siberia. Siberia. In Siberia. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because there's, it's um, deuterium is uh, you have if you look at the planet, you know, um, it's planets are complex hydrological cycles. You know, you've got water evaporating, you know, condensing, raining. So in places that are uh, very uh, north or south uh, latitude, yeah, you know, you have less deuterium. Okay. In glacial areas, you have less deuterium. Just because of the way the hydrological cycle works. Okay. And if you're farther away from the ocean, you have less deuterium because because the ocean is 155.76 in this deuterium level. Okay. So if you go to like the mountains, you'll get somewhere in the 140s, maybe even 130s, and sometimes even the 120s. Okay. And then you and then you look at those, then you look at that population of people, and you say, wow, this is something interesting here. And then you can directly correlate it 
the fact that they're drinking water for not only their lifetime, but multiple lifetimes, because this is cumulative. Like, uh, right. When the, so when they, and when you're the, using water for crops too, or for, for yeah, everything. Soil, yeah, right? exactly. So it's all there. They live in, all they live in an environment where they have less deuterium and that directly correlates to how much energy they have in their body. That's amazing. So what because is it's proportional because the because the effect is proportional to some of the to the some of the concentration. Okay. So it's like a little bit goes a long way over time. So so if you have so if you drink let's say you live in LA and you drink 150 ppm water, which is the tap water there, and then you move up to like Mount Shasta area and that's like 100 and low 40 low 140s. Okay. And uh, over a month period, two two months period, you're not going to see much difference. But over a year or two years or three years, the difference between the net ener the debt energy def debt deficit and the net energy benefit that you get in that little delta yeah. is significant. So it's so, kind of a pennies add up the dollars kind of Exactly. Exactly. Right? Exactly. It's like if you bought maybe if you bought Bitcoin in twenty thirteen. <laughs> not, not that good, unfortunately. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Me neither. Yeah, no, but it is good. So <clears throat> So yeah, that's uh, that's the complex uh, issue that um, we've simplified into, okay. into this. Experiment. And so this water is it, so it's kind of a as a cleansing, so to speak. Well, it's a different concept because we're not putting anything into something. You know, you come to a show and everybody's trying to sell you a supplement and something that's putting something it's, in your body. Yeah, yeah. This is about taking something out of your body. Okay. So all we do is we take deuterium. We reduce the deuterium in the water, mm -hmm. which is very difficult, complex, expensive. But we reduce the deuterium. We take ninety-four to ninety-seven percent of the deuterium out of the water. Okay. okay. Uh, which is which is the deuterium is bound as HDO. So H two O, which is what we want. Right. HDO is what we don't want. And once in a while, you get a D two O, which is heavy water, and that you don't want at all. But it doesn't occur very often. So one out of every forty-one million water molecules. Is, so we concentrate on this. HDO, okay, which is which is a uh, um, hundred and fifty parts per million. So for every one million parts of regular water H two O, you have hundred and fifty parts of HDO. So, so we can I ask a this. quick question. So is there a way to assess that in your own water? Like, is there a water test? Yeah, yeah we could do it. We have a lab. You have a lab. Test .com. Okay. Yeah, we put together a lab to test saliva and water. Okay. Okay. So so we reduce. We take this out. Out this. Um, contaminant and uh and then you drink the water and that lowers your own deuterium levels okay through the mechanism of hydrogen exchange you know it's like if you you're like a, you're like a bucket of water and you know, we're like walking buckets of water and if at the end of the day you know you've got less deuterium in it than you had before you're gonna you're gonna dump some okay right so uh slowly you know quarter quarter ppm to one ppm per day depending on your uh activity level and lifestyle so, but that's not the only way to um, get on a more deuterium depleted protocol. Just you can go, you can go keto, because okay. forever, for, or you can you can practice fasting. Really, the goal of fasting is deuterium depletion. When you burn, when you burn a slightly over a kilo of uh, fat, you get a you get about a liter of deuterium depleted water in your body. In your body, okay. Yeah, because all the you know the water inside our mitochondria is not is not the water that we drink. Right. It's only right. it's water that's synthesized. Okay. It's made. It's homemade right there on site. So, <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so yeah. So the fat, you know, so because fat, because nature's strategy is to deplete the fats. Mm -hmm. So fats have lower deuterium. They're somewhere in the one twenties to lower one thirties. Like, like animal fats and some 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 other some non animal fats as well, but mostly animal fats. Okay. Um, and certainly, if you get those animal fats from areas where they have lower deuterium water, it'll be even lower. But nature's strategy is to load the carbs. Okay. So the roots, the, the, the grains, the, all this. So we, we are, we are like, um, it's, it's really bad to be carbohydrate focused and our society has been pushed to that for the last yeah. hundred years. Yeah. And those carbohydrates are killing us because it's giving us a deuterium level that's higher than even the water we consume. So it's causing us, so it's causing these metabolic processes to break down sooner. And so we age sooner, we get sick sooner in our lives. Oh, wow. So, you, so if I heard you correctly. Uh, carbo loading is not a that good idea. Then. No, <laughs> no. I mean, once in a while for a, maybe a hormetic some, effect. But, sure. But yeah. some carbs are okay, but not. It's like you said. I mean, culturally, and you go to eat out at restaurants. You go to eat a meal, heavy pasta, heavy rice with a couple of meats. Plus, plus, plus the sugars. 
the the um, the, the uh, uh, hydrogenated fats, which you don't have any much more here in this country, but um, anything processed, it's all loaded. Medicines, supplements, it's all loaded with deuterium. You know, so we just we we don't we're 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 not exactly as a, as a uh, civilization uh, <laughs> as close to nature as we once were. Yeah. So, so. Well, that might help understand too, like at least in the United States, where you you've been hearing lately. Uh, we're like going, we're, we're w walking to the generation, the first generation that's going to live less than their previous generation. Right, right. Maybe, except maybe for, except for a small, if, except for a small select group of biohackers that are really trying to figure this out and extend their not only their lifespan but their health span. Yeah, right. So, and I think in in, in other articles you read is like the, the uh, person, the, the first hundred and fifty year old person has probably already been born. You know, you you read articles like that too. Right. So we'll see. I mean, we have so many, we have so many things available to us uh, as a as an intervention. You know, okay. and, I, and I, I showed you the censuses from Russia from the eighteen hundreds. Yeah, this is person one hundred and sixty seven. I mean, we don't know if this is factual or not. No way to verify. But I believe that that uh, when you have less deuterium, you live longer. And it's less stress. It's just less, stre less stress. Less stress on your less, body. Yeah. Less, there's less chances of error that can happen in replication. We're a copy of, we're a Xerox copy of a Xerox copy of a Xerox copy, right? And so if you want that copy to be, if you want that copy to be close to the last copy, you'll, you'll have, you'll have less deuterium because deuterium just stresses everything. It's a, he, it's heavy. Yeah. And so it slows things down. It slows metabolism down and the reduction of it speeds things up. Well, it goes back to like we were saying earlier, you know, double the mass or, whether it's carrying somebody else right. on the back or whatever, exactly. like that's, that's going to exactly wear you down a lot. And then trying to fit through a door that's like this big and you're this big. Right. So, you, so there's so they're going to be calling the repair guys all the time. It's got a lot of broken door frames. A lot of broken too. door frames. Just trying to get. Yeah. And at some point, you say, "I'm done. Just burn it down. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to fix it anymore." Too so, with the water, is there like a suggested protocol? I guess there's various, but like depends on the person. Yeah. I, there is, and there's a general protocol that I could recommend. Um, in the beginning, let's people are going to be around 150. If they live in, you know, if they live in an area where they're getting slightly lower water, it's good for them. But let's just say 150 ppm is what a person is going to be. So um, you can drink anything that's lower in deuterium that you drink is going to lower your deuterium to okay. that to that level. Okay. So most people start at like a, a, th a three to one dilution. Or a four to one dilution. So if you have a one to one dilution, we sell ten ppm, ten parts per million. Okay. We also sell a five, but not much of it because it's very it's five times harder to make the five than the ten because because that last little bit of it's you know it's like mining that last hundred bitcoin you know what <laughs> to get down. So so um, if you go with a one to one dilution, that's eighty. Okay. If you go with a one to two, that's a hundred or one more like one or two. And if you go to one to three, it's one twelve. And 122 ppm if you go one to four. Okay. So so somewhere in this range, you just pick where you want to be, depending on what you can afford, depending on depending on how badly, how quickly you want to get there. Yeah. You know. But I I think slow and steady wins the race. And you could either dilute the water in with other water, or you can dilute the water in your own body. You know, it's a little harder because you got to do the math at the end of the day and see what and see, and see what else you consumed, and then figure out that okay, yeah, today I. It's easy in the beginning because whatever, any, anything you do in the beginning will start lowering it. Right. But as you, as you know, you're going to go 150, 140, 130, you know, it's, 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 it's like, if, so if you're, if you want to get to 120, you know, at some point you're going to have to start drinking 110 or 100 PPM water. Okay. And all the liquid, assuming this is all the liquid you consume, you know, right. you use it to make your, your, um, your teas and beverages, coffee, whatever, uh, some smoothies. So. So uh, what I've noticed is if you got you got to go a little lower to get a little higher. You know, okay. If you want to get to 120, just drink 110. You know, or or drink 120 for a while and then and then drop down a little bit more just so you can get to that. And you can experiment. I tested myself two weeks ago. I'm at 102. Okay. You know, sometimes I'm before that I tested. I was 117 when I first when we first started this company. I was gung ho. I got into the 80s, which is hard to maintain, but it's just it's incredible. But that first 
that bulk of the benefit, 90% of that benefit is in that first reduction, that 30, that 30 PPM. So you and will that, see immediate results. Yeah, within within one to three months. Okay. I think the older you are, the more you'll see, the quicker you'll see the results because the body doesn't expect to drop its cetarium level. It's like, right. what, what happened? How did that, you know? Yeah. Because so to that point, is there like a detox effects or like what was your personal experience when you started going through the process? I was already ketogenic for 10 years. Okay. So uh, the experience for me, it was it, 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 like at first I'm like, okay, well, I, I think I have more energy, but I'm not sure. Yeah. You know? I'm already sleeping good. You know, my skin's okay. I'm not, I'm aging slower than other people my age. So I was okay there. But when I really noticed it, when I got injured. Okay. And I said, oh my God, this reminds me, I, 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 took a, I took a tumble ice skating. I hurt myself pretty bad. And I thought, okay, I'm out for a month. You know, this is just going to hurt. I'm just yeah. going to have to deal with it. Like, like, like I did before, you know, right. like, and, but no, three days later, everything was gone. Really? Mm -hmm. No other interventions or anything? Nothing. Wow. And I would go, wow, when, when, was, like, when was the last time I healed this fast? And I'm like, I remember that time when I was a teenager. Yeah. You, you, you go down and it hurts like hell. And three days later, you're fine again. Yeah. And that's exactly what happened. And I go, oh my God, this is incredible. Wow. And you know what? We started the company before we even tried the water. Because we didn't have any, right? Yeah. We had to go to, we had to Russia. We had to, you know, partner with them and get it over. But we believed in the science, the science, mm -hmm. and it didn't prove us wrong. When we did it ourselves, we, when Robert Slovak and I depleted our deuterium levels, we, we, the science completely checked out. It That's really, amazing. Yeah. So, to the point of experience, and it may vary from each person, but what would be an expectation, like how they would feel? Is it energy? Well, when or you is it when you lower your deuterium levels. You increase what's called pro, what's called proton motor force, the ability for those nanomotors to produce ATP to function better. So there's more protons going through these motors, which produces more ATP. Okay. And that also produces more metabolic water, which means you're able to utilize oxygen better, right? Because you need because the oxygen goes into is part of the electron transport chain too. So you're so everything gets everything gets optimal. Okay. Everything you're. All the, if you do your blood work, you'll see things just start getting optimal where they want to be. Your um, organs will start functioning better. The whole absolutely, whole because, absolutely, <clears throat> because it's, because it's mitochondrial energy from the source that's being released. An incredible amount, because theoretical amount is six x. Well, it's not. That's theoretical. Okay. We we don't live in a vacuum, but but I believe that we have a two x proton motor force increase when you deplete your deuterium levels. And the studies that they did in Russia show that. Okay. Because they showed that after 30 days of deuterium depletion, you need half the amount of oxygen to perform the same amount of work. And that's like, wow. So we're going to recreate those studies here um, as well in the awesome. U.S. Yeah. Awesome. So, so the, the original question was, um, um, what was it? The proto the like the, the result. What would end up? Oh, okay. Doing? So metabolism. Okay, metabolism increases. Okay. Like I can, like you, that, that's what I see across the board with people. Okay. Metabolism increase, uh, sleep improvement, um, skin, which we have backup from, a, there's a study that shows like the collagen layer is twice as thick after deuterium depletion. Oh, wow. Um, well, that, this was topical, but, but everybody, but everybody sure. says it works whether you put it topical consume or you consume it. Yeah. And it's not the water. It's the fact that you're removing deuterium from the body. Okay. So that, that's, that's it. So that allows you to get hydrated. I know many people that drink a gallon of water a day and they're chronically dehydrated. Yeah, because they can't absorb. Because it's not the water your body wants. Oh. It's bulk water. Okay. It stays out in the extracellular fluid. And, uh, and this water, is, this water is, takes that water out. It just exchanges for it. Okay. So, so, um, so there's less, less, so you're less prone to getting, having deuterium coming through the electron transport chain. But then again, most of that, most of that deuterium in the electron transport chain comes from food. You know, deuterium depleted water is a great intervention. It's almost like it's almost like the ideal hack. It's right. actually a true biohack because because you're just like you're cheating. Yeah. Because <laughs> it doesn't exist. I mean, it exists in nature, but you gotta go. What are you gonna go live in Antarctica where it's 89 ppm? <laughs> you're not. Yeah. Okay. So so uh, or you're gonna go live in the Himalayas? You know. So so it's a true biohack. Um, and so. Um, yeah, that's a, it's, it's, a, it's quite interesting. Yeah, it is interesting. Well, I think we're kind of coming up on time. It's really fascinating that, you know, the science has been able to help create something like this that can help people improve both, like you said, the health span, but the, the, the lifespan as well. And 
it's it's something that's been overlooked by mainstream medicine, like so many things, and something yeah. that's been overlooked by uh, uh, by uh, uh, biochemistry. But now, but now it's starting to take hold. Now people are starting to see, you know, because I talk to um, people at the academic level, and it's like they can't they can't deny it, you know, like yeah. hey hey guys, what about this? Yeah. <laughs> like oh well, <laughs> you know, we're not gonna pay attention to that research. Yeah. And that. then when you get into the quantum tunneling yeah. aspect, which I didn't mention in my talk. That's profound because in order, did you know that in order for us to be alive, we have to break the law of physics? No. Yes. What? Yes. It doesn't make any sense. It doesn't make any sense. In order for us to be alive, we have to break the law of physics because because hydrogen quantum tunnels it cheats, right? It takes a, it takes it takes a shortcut. Okay. And if it didn't take that shortcut, we wouldn't be alive. So it basically gets somewhere faster, and which by physics it's called quantum tunneling. And physics goes, oh well. We observe the phenomenon and we can't really explain it, okay? Because, and, but, but, we, but we can say that if it didn't occur, life wouldn't exist. Wow. That's... So, 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 li so, so life breaks the law of physics to exist, okay? And when you see this, when you see this, yes, the, pro the proton, the protium, quantum tunnels, but deuterium does not. So it doesn't have those quantum effects. It just doesn't belong anywhere. It just doesn't, it just, it's just, it's an accident. Happened yeah. in the Big Bang, you know, hydrogen formed, and then the universe cooled a little too fast, if you believe in the Big Bang. Um, and then and the deuterium got stuck as it was transitioning to another element. Okay. So, and it's stuck with us. And so it's here. And like, like I maintain, like when you reduce that, those first 30 points, something kicks in it's that, that, that tells you that we evolved to be able to manage this deuterium level, but not this new deuterium level where we're at. Homo sapiens sapiens is what, 120, 130,000 years old, maybe? And so uh, in that time, deuterium levels may have increased you know, 15 to 30% on this planet. That's amazing. Still, still so much, there's still so, so much we don't, we yeah. stand on the shoulders of giants, <clears throat> we're here today, and there's still so much more to discover and yeah. understand. But we have a little bit, we have a little bit, and you know, we come, we come here uh, with all the tools that we need, we just don't have the manual, <laughs> so we got to find it right. Gotta reverse engineer, right? Got to reverse engineer. Yeah. Well, uh, I usually close things out with a bit of a hot seat. Three questions, nothing too heavy. But what are you reading right now? Mm, oh wow, I'm reading. Um, I'm reading a book by a, a author named Cowper Cal Paulus. Uh, it's a Glastonbury romance. Okay. Okay. It's a phenomenal um, book. Yeah, this guy's this guy is uh, this guy is like he's like the pinnacle of of, uh, of literature, and almost nobody even knows who this is. Is a is a uh, Cowper Cal, Cal, Powis. Cowper Powis. Okay. Cal, Cal, yeah, that's what cool. I'm reading now. Glastonbury Romance. I, All right. Check it out. <laughs> uh, so next question is, uh, what is your go-to rest and recovery method? Uh, well, I mean, sleep like anybody else. I mean, sleep. Greatest sleep. ROI. Absolutely. Yeah. So, thank you so much for what you're doing in science and in offering up this water to help uh, improve quality of life and longevity. So it's, uh, it's super fascinating and I uh, appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thanks.